Hey guys, welcome into today's video. This is gonna be a brand new series on my channel. It's gonna be a foundation a day for 42 days. The reason that I wanted to start this video is that I have 51 foundations in my permanent collection. It's the number two item, maybe number one right now, of makeup that I really like testing. I'm really into testing new foundations. It switches back and forth usually between blush, eyeshadow, and foundation, my three favorite makeup categories, probably a lot of people's favorite makeup categories. But 51 foundations is just too much for me to have in my collection. I recently did a makeup declutter and I will link that up in the cards where I went through my whole collection and I decluttered breaking some of my makeup into three different categories keep declutter and then I made up a third which was items that I want to keep for reference but I'm going to take out of my permanent collection and move into the closet where I keep makeup that I think is popular relevant things that I may want to reference in future videos but that I don't want to use in my personal everyday life but I did not do that with foundation and recently I've gone through a really big skin change in the last eight months to a year I have gone from really really dry skin to very very oily skin and a lot of foundations that used to work for me that were more in the dewy natural finish side just aren't working these days so I'm grabbing and loving more matte foundations so some of my foundations in my collection predate my skin change so the reason for this series I don't want to just declutter foundations based on memory I want to retest a lot of them because some of them are pretty expensive some of them I may re-love some of them I may not like or may not work for me now and it's time to make that determination so while I have 51 foundations in my collection this is foundation a day for 42 days because there are nine foundations I have already made a decision on. Some of them I'm actually testing. They haven't gone into speed reviews, but I've worn them very recently, so I know exactly how I feel about them, but I will have to move them into wherever they're gonna go, keep, declutter, or in the reference pile. And then there are some that I'm testing that I already absolutely love, haven't gone into a speed reviews, and I know that I'm gonna be keeping them. And then two of them, I have already made the decision that I'm going to declutter. So I wanna hop into showing you those nine foundations now. So the first one that I'm gonna keep is the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. I have mine in the shade 4. This product is made in Italy. It has a 12 month shelf life. It retails for $49 and it comes with 1.1 fluid ounces. This is a really new product to me. Hourglass products have not worked for me in the past. This is one of the few that does work. It's kind of a thicker consistency, but it's really, really light coverage and it's very hydrating. And unlike other Hourglass products that I have used in the past, this one actually sinks into my skin. I think it can look kind of textured on my face if I go in with too much product. So I do like to go in with a single layer, very minimal product with this and I feel like that's how it looks best on my face. And I would reach for this on lighter coverage days. I have lighter coverage skin tints in my collection that I do feel perform a little bit better than this but because it is fairly new and it does work and it's the first hourglass product that has worked for my complexion, I am going to hold on to this one. The next one that I'm going to hold on to is the MAC Studio Fix Everywhere All Over Face Pen. I have mine in the shade NC15. This is made in Belgium. It has a 24 month shelf life. It retails for $35 and it comes with 0.41 fluid ounces. It's actually marketed as a multi-use concealer pen with medium to full coverage with a natural matte but waterproof finish. It's an interesting pen style. It has a twist on and off at the bottom and it comes with a very pointed dispenser and you push the bottom of it to get the product to come out. This is brand brand new to me. It is still in the testing phases. I have not even put this in a speed review so I am going to hold on to it. It is a beautiful medium to full coverage foundation. It's a medium weight consistency but it still works for me. What I find with this is that it actually kind of wears off of me after six hours. It's not as matte and as long wearing as I would like. This does claim to be I think a 36 hour wear I would say I get a maximum of six before my oils really start peeking through so while I like its natural matte finish I feel like it's just not overly long wearing on me but because it's brand new and it's going into a speed reviews it also gets to stay the next one that I'm going to keep is also because it's new it's the Fenty eavesdrop blur and smooth skin stick I have mine in the shade 2 this is made in Italy it has a 12 month shelf life it retails for $35 and it comes with 0.32 ounces. It is marketed as having light coverage, but long wearing. It's supposed to offer smooth texture, blurs, and have a natural finish. I would say that this is the most hydrating skin stick or foundation stick that I have ever used, but it still makes my skin look very, very textured. I think it's best for me with a very, very light layer. Otherwise, there's no blurring happening. In fact, my skin looks overly textured. So because this hasn't gone into a speed reviews yet, it is going to stay in my collection, but I feel like at some point it's going to move out for one reason or another. The next one that is staying is the Gucci Internite Debuté 
24 hour wear breathable foundation. I have mine in the shade 160N Fair. This is made in Korea. It has a 12 month shelf life. It retails for $69 at Sephora. It does come with one fluid ounce. It's supposed to be a 24 hour foundation with a luminous matte finish. It's full coverage. It says it's supposed to be full coverage in one drop. This like a lot of other luxury beauty products does have a floral scent, but even though it's full coverage, it does have a luminous matte finish. It is still a really runny formula for being such a high coverage foundation. It is new to me, but it is one of my favorites currently. I am loving this, so this is definitely going to stay with me. The next one that gets to stay is the YSL All Hours Foundation. I have mine in the shade LN1. It is made in France. It has a 12 month shelf life. It retails for $60. It comes with 0.84 fluid ounces. It does have an SPF of 30. It's marketed as having a 24 hour weightless full coverage luminous matte finish. The fourth ingredient in this foundation is alcohol. So if that bothers you guys, you probably would not like it. It's a new foundation to me, but also I am loving this one just like the Gucci one. I think it's a long wear matte finish foundation. It doesn't last as long as the Gucci, but it is still really, really good. One of my brand new favorites. Oh, and this does have a pretty perfumey scent to it as well. The next one that gets to stay is also new to me. It's the Prada Reveal Foundation. I have mine in the shade LN15. It is made in France. It has a 12 month shelf life. It comes with one fluid ounce. It retails for $43 on Selfridges. However, I did pick mine up on the Harrods website. Again, the third ingredient in this is alcohol and it does come with a fragrance to it. This is a refillable plastic component. The inside Side is a glass canister. It's a very, very lightweight serum-like foundation that offers medium buildable to full coverage. It's pretty much the same as the other two that I'm really loving, which is a luminous matte finish that is super long wearing and looks super beautiful and smoothing on my skin. So this gets to stay because it's new to me. I have tested it recently and loving it. The next one that gets to stay is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. I have mine in the shade 1.5N. This is the old version before they reformulated. This is the satin finish. I absolutely love it. You can't get it anymore, so I am not incorporating it into the 42 days of foundation, but I will test the reformulation at some point. I love this. It's very, very lightweight, serum-like, but it's medium coverage with a satin finish that basically lasts me all day. So I'm really sad that they reformulated. We will test the reformulation again in this series, but for now, because you can't get this anymore, I feel like there's no reason for me to retest it. The next and final two are not foundations that are gonna be included in the 42 days of testing foundation because today I decided they will be decluttered. So the first one is the Sephora Best Skin Ever Foundation. I have mine in the shade 17.5N. This is made in France. It retails for $20. It has a 12 month shelf life. It comes with 0.84 fluid ounces. It's described as having a medium natural finish, but hydrating for up to 12 hours. This is my most used foundation. There's about half left. And originally I put this into a project pan. However, I used it after I pulled it out from my project pan and it lasted on me for about four hours before it completely faded. So I know that my skin change has caused this foundation to not work for me as well as it used to. It's more of a whipped consistency. And so it's a little bit thicker and heavier. It was medium to full coverage while still being super hydrating on my really, really dry skin. I loved this foundation because it was maybe a more full coverage foundation that worked for my really dry skin. And now that my skin has changed, I noticed this doesn't work as well for me. So I'm not gonna keep it in my project pan. I would rather pull one into my project pan that works better for me now and just declutter this finally. I'm sorry to let it go with half the product left, but I would rather get use out of some of the ones that I'm loving. And then the final one that will be decluttered is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydro Rescue Foundation. This is with an SPF of 45. I have mine in the shade 1N2 Ecru. This is made in Canada. It retails for $51. I cannot find the shelf life listed anywhere. This does come with 1.2 fluid ounces. It's described as a breathable radiant finish with medium coverage. The reason this has to go is because it's such a high SPF and I've had it in my collection for so long. And looking in the tube, I can tell that the product is separating. And when it has SPF in it, you really do want to follow the shelf life. I have definitely had this more than 12 months, which is usually what I would keep or try and keep something with an SPF. So this does have to go. This is an extremely lightweight, super serum-like, but 
medium coverage, great SPF, super natural radiant finish. It just works so well on your skin and I feel like it would work for many different skin types. It was great for me on my dry days. This has even been a good SPF for me, even more oily. It's so beautiful. I am gonna declutter this and throw it away because it's on the old side, but I'm probably going to repurchase this. So today is day one. This is the very first video that I'm filming. This is the very first foundation that I'm testing, but what is on today's agenda is the Dior Forever Skin Glow. I have my in the shade 1.5 n it does come in 42 different shades i did pick this up at sephora and it retails at sephora for 55 dollars. it has a 12 month shelf life it is one fluid ounce this is made in france this is actually described as radiant medium to full coverage it has an spf of 15 and it's supposed to be made up of 86 percent skincare ingredients what i remember about this foundation is that it's a heavier consistency it's almost a whipped texture and whipped textured foundations in the past haven't worked for me they seem to kind of sit on top of my skin. They seem to separate as the day goes on and not sink into my skin and into my pores and mesh with my skin very well. So this foundation, even though I love Dior base products, has been a foundation that's been a little bit tricky for me. I've only used it a couple of times, to be quite honest. Every time it kind of seemed to give me the same effect. But because my skin has changed so, so much, I want to test out whether or not this is going to be a foundation that's really going to work for me and needs to stay in my collection or it needs to go. One of the things that I've been finding with the foundations that never used to work for me, they are working for me now. And the ones that used to work aren't. So I'm pretty much getting an opposite effect on all the foundations. So I don't wanna just declutter them based on memory. Like I told you guys, what we're gonna do with every one of these foundations and their wear test is that I'm going to apply them on camera with you guys, one side with a brush, one side with a sponge. Then I'm gonna finish my makeup because I am getting ready for the day. We'll do a check-in at the very end of all my makeup on and see how everything is sitting on top of my skin and, and meshing with other products or even just how it looks now being set down with powder as I do set all of my foundations down with powder and then we'll do a four hour check-in on my phone that I will show you guys at the eight hour mark when I come back and sit down in the seat so let's just hop right into this I'm probably going to start off with just about a half a pump and I'm going to go into this side 1.5 n is the shade that I have in a lot of my Dior complexion products. Even though I have the concealer in two, I don't know why, I'm gonna be taking a clean brush. This is just the Airbrush Full Coverage Complexion Brush. It's the number 77 from IT Cosmetics. I would like to add just a little bit more coverage because that was on the lighter side, probably not as much as I would normally wear on an everyday basis. I want to be careful not to layer it up too much because it is a thicker consistency. It's almost moussey. And I showed you guys what it looks like when I pumped it onto my hand. You can see when a foundation tends to like clump in one spot and isn't overly serum-like or thin of a texture, it's not going to run down your arms. And so I noticed that it was just sitting there in that spot. And so I fear with moussier consistencies, that it's going to pill up on me but i want it to be able to give me the amount of coverage that i would normally wear which i feel like is medium to full coverage these days mostly that's what i like so far with the brush it's super beautiful it doesn't give me the impression that it used to and how it used to kind of just sit on my skin especially around my nose it used to kind of cake up right here and even separate because I feel like it wouldn't sink into my pores. I just had really small pores when I had dry skin and I feel like this shade match is really, really good. So I took more than half a pump. So I'm gonna do about the same on this side and I'll get even less coverage, I'm sure, with a dampened sponge. Yeah, a lot less coverage with the sponge, especially in the areas where I tend to get a little bit more red. So I'm going back in just in those spots, like especially around my nose. I could tell it was a little bit lighter coverage. And then right there at my jawline, I think that looks a lot better. And that little bit of added coverage, I feel like I evened things out. I see a tiny bit of a radiant finish. This is supposed to be the Skin Glow, so it's supposed to be their natural, more radiant foundation, but it's still supposed to be long wearing because it does claim to be a 24 hour radiant foundation that gives you perfection and hydration, concentrated floral skincare 
with sunscreen. It's not very much sunscreen. Like I told you guys, it is an SPF of 15. But the radiance is really, really slight. So it's almost like a satin finish foundation because it's a little bit more of a whip texture. That's kind of the impression that I'm getting with it. Overall though, medium coverage. But the extra foundation that I added didn't seem to make it look super heavy on my skin. It still looks very, very lightweight. I still have my freckles peeking through. So far, this is not doing what it used to do, which I told you guys was just really sit on my skin poorly, start to pill up and separate in the center of my face. So now I'm gonna go and finish the rest of my makeup. I will set my face with the Dior Backstage Powder No Powder, and then we'll come back and check on how the foundation looks, probably after about 20 minutes. I'll see you soon. Okay, welcome back. I'm actually really excited that I decided to do this video because I'm looking at it and it's like not at all how I remember it. It's very smooth, slight, slight radiance. There's nothing sitting on my nose strangely. Everything seems to be sinking into my pores really nicely. In fact, it kind of looks like a lighter consistency foundation when I know this to be a little bit more of a whipped, kind of heavier texture. I can say that I feel the foundation on, which tells me I definitely know that it's a heavier consistency, but it doesn't look like a heavier consistency. So let's go do a check-in in natural light, then I'll do a check-in at four hours, and we'll come back at eight hours at the least. Sometimes it might be longer just depending upon when I'm able to come back up here and sit down, but we're gonna give it a full day's wear test. So for you guys, let's go. Welcome back. It's about nine o'clock, so I think I probably have had this on about 10 hours. I wanna say it was like 11 o'clock when I stopped. So I'm gonna throw up on the screen here, check-ins that I did in natural light and then what I did at four hours at natural light. I think this foundation has a couple of issues. The biggest issue is not that it has like this natural medium buildable coverage, but that it's a heavier consistency. It's almost whipped, which I feel like works against it. I feel like it would be such a beautiful foundation if it wasn't on the heavier side, but you don't really get medium coverage out of it unless you build it up. And so as you start to build it up, it definitely gets heavier. I think at like the five, six hour mark, somewhere around there, I started to like anticipate that it was gonna start breaking up as it has done for me in the past and it didn't. It actually, like the six hour mark, I wanna say, like it looked super fresh, it looked super good. I was like out sweating and I kinda like patted my face down and the foundation just looked really good. Even on my super oily skin. I don't know, there was just something about the way that my oils were meshing with it at like the six hour mark that actually seemed to like rehydrate it or just make my skin look super fresh and glowy. It's not bad. Even at like the 10 hour mark that we're at now, I still feel like it's decent. Of course, you can see most of my oils peeking through, like even on my cheeks here, totally on my forehead, definitely on my nose. It's faded pretty evenly just about everywhere. Again, I feel like the foundation's problem is that it's heavier in consistency. I feel like it definitely tends to just slip off a little bit. I noticed that it was heavy at the six hour mark. I was like, I still feel it on my face, which I felt like was really weird. For a skin glow, which is the Perfection and Hydration Concentrated Floral Skin Care with SPF of 15, I feel like it just should be a lighter weight. They could have made this a little bit lighter weight. And the skin glow, it's not an overly radiant foundation. It's more like a satin finish. I just don't find it an overly like glowy product. I feel like the big question here is, does it stay or does it go? It's so hard because this is day one, first time testing a foundation going through all 42 of my foundations. And I want to say that this gets to stay because it did not work for me. It just didn't work super well. I definitely see why I don't reach for this very much because there are a lot of other foundations that work better than this one personally for my oily skin. And I really want to get rid of the ones that don't work at all and not pretend that they do. This one does work, it's just not as good as some of my favorites. And I think I'm gonna have to come to terms with that if I'm gonna keep any more than like four foundations in my collection. So for now, this one gets to stay. Thoughts still stand, not a favorite for me, but it didn't perform how it did when I had dry skin. Those are my final thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed day one of foundation a day for 42 days. If you are new to my channel, I hope you guys consider subscribing so you get to stick around. I will catch you all either in my next video or foundation a day for 42 days, day number two.